Oh, like, hey, Scoob, did you hear Nikki Blake is host of a Scooby-Doo panel? No. Yeah. Like on today's Scooby-Doo episode, Scooby-Doo and Shaggy meet Nikki Blake. Yeah, in a Scooby panel. <laughs> like, we need to get this puppy started. <laughs> okay, Nikki Blake, take it away, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> We're going to do something a little fun and a little different than what we would normally do on our, on our Scooby chats. Our Scooby chats usually aren't this planned, but Alexa and I came up with a whole plan. So Alexa, do you want to explain to them the first round? Yeah. Um, so the first round is going to be just some like warm up questions. And the idea is that we do it in like a rapid fire uh, kind of way. So it's just like the quickest. Um, speed round of warm-up questions um i'm nervous there's six of them and is there anything else we need to explain or can we just hop right into it nikki no i think that's all that we need to explain so on my screen you guys are set up wendy me tori alexa devin leah danny okay so I'm gonna keep going in that order when we answer all the questions. I can say your name since my screen is set up different than yours. You don't have to remember that order. Perfect. Okay. Alexa, go ahead, first question. Oh my god. First gosh. question, favorite series? The Scooby-Doo Show. Scooby-Doo, where are you? Tori? Be Cool Scooby-Doo. Alexa? Scooby-Doo Show or Be Cool? Devin? Where are you? Classic. Leah? Where are you? Hands down. Not a contest. <laughs> Danny? The Scooby-Doo show. Okay. Second warm-up question is favorite movie. Wendy? Scooby-Doo meets the Boo Brothers. I'm going to go with Witch's Ghost. Tori? Witch's Ghost all the way. <laughs> Alexa? Witch's Ghost or Legend of the Vampire? Devin? 2002 live action movie. Leah? Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. Danny? Boo Brothers. And question three, favorite villain? Oh, the Witch of Salem. Black Knight. Tori? Also the Witch of Salem. Captain Cutler. Charlie the Robot. Leah? Ghost Clown or Space Pook or Captain Cutler. I love all of them. <laughs> Danny? Space Pook. Next question. What flavor Scooby Grams do you prefer? Cinnamon, honey, or chocolate? Honey. Honey. Tori? Cinnamon. Alexa? Honey or cinnamon. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I'm going to say cinnamon, but I don't think I've ever had the chocolate, but like maybe the chocolate if it was good. <laughs> Leah? Uh, same as Devin. I think they only sell the cinnamon in my area as far as I've seen, but the chocolate sounds yummy. Mm. Danny? I've also only ever had cinnamon, so I'll go with that one. <laughs> I will have to bring the honey and the chocolate to Indianapolis. Mm. <laughs> Fine. Next question. How long have you been a Scooby fan and or when did you start your Scooby collection? 30 years answer for both. A really long time and my parents started buying me stuff when it was available in the Warner Brothers stores. Tori? I would have to say like five or six years old and my parents started me off with the VHSs. Alexa? I almost think I was like one or two because my brother had a VHS tape and then just started kicked it off from there. I'm about the same as everybody else. I, uh, basically, since I was born, got the VHS tapes, got the toys growing up. I couldn't tell you an exact year, but it feels like since it forever. <laughs> Leah? Uh, somewhere between five and ten. I don't remember exactly, but I probably started watching it because my mom watched it as a kid and that's probably what started it at all. Danny? Um, so uh, when I was three, I started liking it. So that's 23 years. And then serious, this level collecting was when I was 
seven when I got some magnets. <laughs> And our final warm up question is What is the first word that comes to mind when you hear the name Scooby Doo? Wendy? Well, it's going to be silly because it's actually part of a phrase. I mean, technically, the answer is rut because I think rut row. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll accept rut row as an answer. <laughs> uh, for me, it's lovable. Sorry. Probably zoinks. There we go. Alexa. I think snacks, as in Scooby Snacks. I Kevin? instantly just thought dog tag. <laughs> <laughs> Leah. Happy, because Scooby makes me happy. And Danny. I just had cute immediately. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that is it for our warm up questions. The rest of this is going to be similar to table topics. If you guys have ever heard of that, basically table topics is like a card game where you have a group of people, you select a card and the card has like a, if you could be any animal, what would you be? And then everybody answers that. So okay. our first topic is of all the places the gang has visited which one would you want to visit and why wendy can i do my usual cheat and have two answers sure <laughs> okay so i'm gonna give the answer of one that i've already technically been to and then one that i haven't been to so of course the witch of salem is my favorite and it was part of the reason that i wanted to visit salem massachusetts for a very long time since i was a kid and in 2003, my dad and I did take a trip and we did visit there. I would love, that is the one place I would love to go back to. So Salem, Massachusetts uh, or Loch Ness in Scotland. I kind of, I kind of would like to see the Loch Ness monster. I mean, I sang Loch Lomond in a competition when I was younger with my friend. I kind of just would like to stand somewhere in Scotland and belt that out and <laughs> just for the hell of it you know maybe scooby will come by playing his bagpipes so scotland for my second answer particularly though some place where i could spot the loch ness monster nice for me it is australia because i just want to see kangaroos in the wild and i really like australian accents so yeah but not the spiders i hear they have really big spiders and i don't want to see any of those Sorry. I think I would have to go to Oak Haven, Massachusetts. I really don't know if it's a real place, but where the witch's ghost is set because it just looks like the cutest little small town in the world. And I love the foliage. I grew up in Texas, so I never saw like pretty trees like that. It looks very like chilly and warm and cozy. And I want to go to the diner and I want to do everything in that town, real or imaginary. Alexa. I would say Oak Haven as well, um, but also Australia solely because of that uh, montage when they're like going around the outback um, and like Vampire Rock would be fantastic if that actually exists. I don't know. Can I choose? I can choose fake places, right? This doesn't have to be a real sure. place. Or any place that the gang has Anywhere. visited, you can choose. Okay. I have two places plus a little bonus, uh, bonus <laughs> place. So <laughs> I'll make them quick. Uh, if Spooky Island was a real place, uh, mm -hmm. heck yeah, I'm going there. Um, Cyber Chase, just the in the video game world would be really fun. And then also um, the Coolzonian Museum, <laughs> just to see all the costume. Mm -hmm. Leah? Uh, again, it's not them really visiting, but I would go to Coolsville, like totally, especially like uh, Devin was saying, the Criminology Museum, like I wish they had all the props from that movie set up in real life and I could just see all the costumes, but like even just to go to the malt shop or like, you know, the little other places in Coolsville, just be so much fun. <laughs> I wish it was real. <laughs> Warner Brothers can make that happen. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, my. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Danny? Um, I've always wanted to go to Japan. So that like popped in my head right away. And then I could look for Cowardly Crooper stuff because that's so ridiculous and fun to watch awesome alexa 
next question <laughs> is if you could pick a setting and a monster for an episode or movie, what would it be? And also just a side note, is there anything that we haven't seen in a Scooby-Doo episode or movie yet? Right? That's what I'm trying I to think, think of. So. I don't think so. Um, I mean, there has to be something that hasn't been done, but what? I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is this like ba- with monsters and settings that have already happened in Scooby or this is just like anything? Anything you want. If you could write it hypothetically. Okay. So I would kind of like to see a mystery taking place in like an antique shop. Mm. And I mean, I got to go with some kind of vampire. I'm not sure what the purpose of him being there would be, but I'm a vampire girl, hands down. I love when there are vampires in anything. So villain, a vampire, and something in a haunted antique shop. I would put the Black Knight in a castle because I was kind of disappointed that he was in a museum and not a castle. So I would definitely have the Black Knight in a castle. That would be my thing. Sorry. So I would do like an appropriate family friendly version of like Scooby Doo meets Midsummer, the scary movie. So maybe like the gang are visiting their friends and they are in some sort of cult and the leader has like everyone under a spell, maybe witchy somehow, but like with less gruesome murder scenes <laughs> than the actual <laughs> Midsummer, yeah. but kind of like those vibes, but with Scooby and the gang. Well, there's something we haven't seen. Anything cult related? Mm -hmm. That's true. There we go. Alexa. I'd like to see another episode or movie set in Canada. Agreed. And then I think the first thing that popped into my head was like a minotaur, but a moose. (laughs) I'm uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I like that. Interesting. <laughs> okay. I just thought I, I have an answer that I already had, but I have a separate answer. I feel like they've never done anything in a church or like a haunted church. That might yeah. be kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, but what I was going to say, I don't I don't know if any of you have seen this movie. I'm sure Wendy has, but Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Have any of you seen mm-hmm. this movie? Just bits of it, I think. Abbott and it's got Frankenstein, Dracula, werewolf in it, and Abbott and Costello. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, meet Scooby Doo. <laughs> I feel like just throw them in there. I, I, that'd be good. Everybody in one place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leah. So I was trying to think of crossovers because I feel like most like settings in real world we've seen already, and there have been a ton of Scooby crossovers. But in terms of like modern media. I think seeing the Scooby-Doo gangs in the Stranger Things universe would be really interesting. Mm. Um, again, kind mm-hmm. of that 70s, 80s era, especially if you use sort of the 80s designs for the gang. Um, witchy, you've already got monsters in that setting. It would just be interesting to see. They're all teenagers. Um, it'd be interesting to see the Stranger Things gang animated too. Definitely would be for adults, but that would be fun. I would like that. Yeah. Danny? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be selfish and bring them to Canada, and I specifically <laughs> want them to go to Kelowna, BC, and see the, an Ogo, a fake Ogo Pogo, uh, because I love yes. some monsters, so I'm like, I, and also a fake one, I want it to be a bet, because I want the real one to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's there. <laughs> so, yeah, them versus a fake Ogo Pogo. Probably something to do with real estate in BC. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. Next question. If you can meet any person, living or dead, that was involved in Scooby-Doo in some way, who would it be? Oh, gosh. Um, I hope I get his name right. John Stevenson. Mm-hmm. Who I honestly think he must have been in every single episode of classic Scooby-Doo, Scooby-Doo show. Because he has done so many voices. All of the iconic ones. And... I just feel like even more so than the people that voiced the gang, I would love to just be able to talk to him about his perspective of viewing everything that went on for Scooby over so many years and what it was like to voice so many different characters. And even though, obviously, once you've seen the episode so many times, 
and you get familiar with someone's voice, you can usually be like, oh, that's the same person that voiced this villain or whatever, even though it sounds quite different. But he was so good. There are times where I wasn't sure it was him. Like he really completely changed it. And I just, I just feel like in a way he's, he's kind of like the unsung star of Scooby because he's just been in so much of it. And he is like an integral part because apart from the gang, the villain is the most important thing. And he was so many villains. So yeah. John Stevenson, for sure, for sure. I have a hard time with this one because, you know, there's so many people that have worked on Scooby-Doo <clears throat> that I would want to meet. And trying to pick just one person is so difficult. But I'm going to go with Iwo Takamoto because he designed Scooby. And I just have so many questions for him. So many questions. So, yeah. Sorry. I feel like I may have to go celebrity style on this yeah. and um, do Cher because I would love to just meet Cher. And I know she's been on the new Scooby-Doo movies and maybe like Casey Musgraves because she was on Guess Who and I love her. So I would definitely take advantage of some of our celebrity guest stars. Alexa? Yeah, this was a hard question, but I have to second your answer, Nikki, and say you want Takamoto. Devin? Um, I'm going to go with Frank Welker just because he's been with the franchise since forever and he's like mm -hmm. seen basically every iteration of it and he's been there through it all and also like I feel like he doesn't do a lot of interviews really so I feel like it'd be really interesting to meet him because I would have said like Matthew Lillard or something but like I feel like he'd be easier to meet than Frank Welker probably would be and talk to so I, I would choose Frank Welker. Leah? I can't pick just one, but my top three after sitting here thinking about it would be uh, Frank Welker, Casey Kasem, or Matthew Lillard. Like all of their like voice acting is just like so iconic. Like um, like Wendy was saying earlier, you hear them in all the different voices. You can hear Casey Kasem doing so many side character voices. And, you know, after watching for years, you can go, there's Casey Kasem. It's like, he's the voice of Scooby-Doo. Same with Frank Welker. And I think Matthew Lillard really picked up Shaggy's mantle of that voice so well with the live action movies and now continuing to do the voices I just I'd love to meet all three of them <laughs> Danny um I have to as a voice actor go with Casey Kasem especially because Shaggy is my favorite character and has always meant like the most to me I'm like yeah beautiful <laughs> <laughs> And for the next question, which member of the gang do you relate to the most and why? To be honest, it's really hard for me to choose between Fred and Daphne because I feel like it's both of them in equal parts for different reasons, though. Um, I am definitely, I have realized in my old age, I have realized that I am, in fact, danger prone. Uh, I didn't think that was true until someone said it to me and they meant it. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm not clumsy. I don't hurt myself. I don't do any of these things. And actually, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And I have done that forever. Um, and I am somebody that like, I like to look nice no matter what I'm doing. I mean, if I'm raking the lawn, I still will like do my hair first and put on something nice, you know, it just, just kind of is a thing. I still love that moment when, I mean, Charlie is a pretty scary villain if you really think about it, you know, out of the franchise. And F Foul Play in Funland is actually kind of a spooky episode. And I just love that moment where they're in the tunnel of love and Charlie runs into the boat and they all fall in the water and Daphne gets up and she's not scared she's angry because she's all wet and she's like I'm gonna make him pay for what he did to my hair and like that would be totally me I would I would be that person I would be like my mascara is running my hair is ruined my outfit like what why did you do that like forget the fact that it's a scary creepy robot you don't know what it is and it's trying to potentially kill you doesn't matter um but as as somebody who often does become like the unofficial leader in like a situation or something like that the one that ends up making decisions and things like it just has always happened since I was a kid I do relate to Fred 
because I feel like if I was actually going to be a member of the gang, it would probably be Freddie and not Daphne. So each of them, honestly, though, in equal parts, but for different reasons. I'm going to have to say Fred, because like you, I am typically the one that like takes control of things. And it's more because the people that I'm dealing with are incapable of doing so. So somebody has to do it. So yeah. <laughs> Tori? I think growing up, I always wanted to be a Daphne because, you know, just as a young child, looking at the group in general and looking at the girls specifically, you see Daphne as like the super glamorous character and she always gets like kidnapped and saved and that sort of thing. But I think as I've gotten older, I've had to come to terms with the fact that I am a Velma just through and through. I love mysteries. I, like that's the only genre of book I really read ever. I love trying to put the pieces together and like find the clues. And um, obviously I wear glasses, so duh, it has to be Velma. Um, but yeah, I just really connect with Velma and I have definitely grown to really, really love her and view her as the brains of the group in the absolute best way possible and as we learned from the live action movie Velma can be pretty sexy too so don't yeah. don't knock out Miss Velma she doesn't only wear turtlenecks all the time <laughs> so for everybody here that wears glasses have you ever lost your glasses and like did the whole Velma thing like for real have you it's so it's I've been like taking them off at like night and then like I got up in the morning and I reached where they were and they aren't there and I'm like no and then I'm like on the ground I can see this far this far that's kind of the only thing is where I didn't know where I put them down when I wake up or something I really cannot see without my glasses I'm like a hundred <laughs> yeah I can't either and I have I've already put them down at night and then they fell and yeah I, I'll be like where are my glasses? And my husband's like, all right, Velma. And it's like, no, <laughs> seriously, like, where are my glasses? Bad around. You can't, you're kind of, you can't see. <laughs> right. For me, I just got my glasses recently and it's just um, like a bit of astigmatism in my one eye. So I can still see without them. Um, but I wear them mostly for like computer use because I find that that really affects my eyes. So if I'm at work and I like, I can constantly like putting them on and taking them off and putting them on. And then I'll like go to do some computer work and I'm like, my glasses, where are my glasses? <laughs> and like, just purposefully. And my coworker's like, okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, which member of the gang do you relate to most and why? I think aspects of every single member of the gang can come into play in different situations. Um, but like for one, I always really related to what's new Scooby-Doo Daphne because she was so resourceful and like independent and just ready to be like, oh, this door is locked. Why don't I just use my credit card to like pry it open? Um, and also I'm like super clumsy and running into things all the time. So the danger front <laughs> thing kind of works too. <laughs> and then Velma as well, because I'm like a huge bookworm and love all things like that and like the zombie island um Velma bookstore I would like recreate that with all the books that I had when I was a kid and I was like this one got it this one got it <laughs> <laughs> I love that Devin um I mean if I was a kid still I probably would have said like shaggy because I feel like that's what I related to as a kid but now that I'm an adult I definitely relate to Fred for the same reasons as you and Wendy um just because I don't know I'm also like the leader kind of on accidentally on purpose of like the friend group I drive everybody everywhere I just kind of I'm like okay let's do this or let's do this and like just kind of lead everybody where to go and like take charge and I don't know that's just yeah I don't relate to Fred in that way Leah I think I'm a little bit of everybody and I think that's what makes the gang so great is you can see bits of yourself and all the characters like Fred for me I definitely like to be in control I like to be in charge uh Daphne I wish I was half as stylish as she is like if I could pull off that purple dress of hers like purple's my favorite color so I really relate to that and I'm, I'm very clumsy too so uh, Velma I've always loved science studying um was definitely a bookworm growing up and then Shaggy and Scooby definitely can relate to being either afraid or hungry, like both of those, like 
So I see myself in all of them, really. I don't think I can pick one in particular. Danny? Um, I gotta say, I'm, I'm probably a Vilma Shaggy hybrid. Because <laughs> uh, I definitely am a comedic relief, whether I want to be or not. Um, but also, like, I'm pretty calculated in what I do. Um, so that's why I also have, like, Vilma in there. And I, like, don't necessarily have to be in charge, but I, like, I'm good to help and I'm good to figure things out. And I'll be like, hey, by the way, like this. But then I'll also, like, be terrified of something and make a stupid joke. So <laughs> really good combination of those two. <laughs> Okay. Our next question. What band or artist would you like to create a Scooby-Doo theme song? Oh, okay. I thought I was going to, for a split second, I was like, how do I even answer this? I have no idea. And then it was just there. I mean, Sean Cassidy, I don't give it a nice, uh, I, I think he could maybe even do better than Austin Roberts. I think he could. Uh, I would love to see Sean Cassidy do a theme song for Scooby. I had a hard time picking just one, so I am going to give two answers, and they're like on total opposite ends of the spectrum. So on one side, we've got Dave Matthews Band. I think they would make a pretty funky and fun theme song. And on the other side of the spectrum, we have Rob Zombie, because I just think that he could make something that's really like spooky and scary and, and pretty cool. Sorry. I think if I was keeping in line with like the vintage Scooby, I would do maybe like the Mamas and the Papas or Fleetwood Mac, like in their heyday. Like mm -hmm. I feel like that meant like the Scooby Doo, where are you? And then if I was trying to be more modern, I mean, I just really like Casey Musgraves and I feel like she's very popular right now. And she's done some great covers in like different genres, not just like country per se. So I think she would probably kill it in like a new modern iteration. Alexa? I have always really liked the Simple Plan What's New Scooby-Doo song. So keeping in that vein, like completely, on, even on the Canadian front, uh, Seaway. And then the other one that I was thinking of um, was With Confidence because they did do this shirt and I love it. Oh, oh that's, that's cool. Awesome. That's really cool, yeah. Seven. Okay, neither of these are like my music taste per se, but just when you asked the question, I felt like these would be interesting ones. I feel like it would, would make total sense like Frank Sinatra because that's literally where Scooby, the name Scooby-Doo came from. So it'd be interesting to have the that kind of vibe with like one, be more casual, I feel like, not so spooky. And then my initial response was Tiny Tim. Do you know who Tiny Tim is? Tiptoe, mm -hmm. yeah. Tiptoe through the window. Okay. That'd be spooky. That'd be spooky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That'd be spooky. I feel like you do a good job. <laughs> I can sing, I know. <laughs> no, you did great. That was perfect. You did great. You did do great. <laughs> Leah. I think for me, instead of like trying to create a new theme song, I think more along the lines of covering like some of the older theme songs. And I think who would be really fun to see that would be Pentatonics. Um they, they're an acapella group and they've done lots of covers like even like covers to the decades and so I think it'd be really fun to see them do an all vocal cover of like all the different theme songs and hear like the progression and the change and I think that'd be really fun. Danny? Um, I'm gonna go with two because I kind of have like two different vibes like my favorite Simple Plan like that that theme is amazing so that makes me want like a less than Jake ska punk version um they've also had a song in what's new scooby-doo so I'm like kind of like yeah go in that vibe and then uh to completely switch it up I want an electronic one so like let's have dead mouse do a spooky little like electronic one that would be yeah. so cool <laughs> all right Alexa okay. This next question is kind of a three-part question. Um, you can either pick one or two or answer all three. Um, what is either A, the first memory that you have of Scooby-Doo or your favorite Scooby-Doo related memory? B, the moment you remember falling in love with Scooby-Doo or C, the first Scooby-Doo item you remember getting? 
I can answer all three because they're all the same answer. <laughs> they like they legitimately are. I'm going to try not to knock over everything in here. I talk about it all the time, but I think I can move enough out of the way. It's my big Mighty Star Toys Scooby-Doo. I could not have been more than five, maybe, maybe six years old. It is the first, if first or second Scooby item that I ever got. And I can still remember being in the flea market and we were walking down the aisle, you know, flea markets have these big, long, like football field style aisles, like they're long and the booth that he was in, and I'm pretty sure he was the only Scooby, even though there were multiples of other things there, but he was in this booth of like gigantic stuffed toys. There was like this great big teddy bear. I think there was an elephant, just these really like huge, huge, even bigger than him great big things. And I saw that Scooby. I don't know how I spotted him from so far down the way. And I was like grabbing at my dad. I was like, dad, there's a Scooby in that booth. Look at, look at the Scooby, look at the Scooby. And so for me, because I, I don't really remember anything prior to that Scooby related, even though obviously I must've been watching Scooby to know what the stuffed Scooby was and to want it. But that is my first Scooby memory. And in that moment, I was so in love with that toy and I was so afraid that I wasn't going to get it. And I can remember walking out of the booth with him and he was like literally the same size as me. It just made like my whole trip and that Scooby slept on my bed with me for years, years and years. And it always made me feel safe because I was kind of afraid of the dark. I had a lot of nightmares when I was a kid and my bed was up against a wall. And I would always sleep next to the wall and having that Scooby being like almost person size, like person size to me and having him like lay on the other side of my double bed made me feel safe. Like no one could like come in the bed and get me in the middle of the night as silly as that sounds. But like, it was a real problem when I was a kid, I was very afraid. And so that Scooby is like, like I said before, I would, I would get rid of everything else if all I could do is keep one thing it would be him and I wouldn't trade him for any piece of Scooby memorabilia in existence or that I could dream up he is just that's my Scooby yeah. like I want to be buried with my Scooby to be <laughs> honest like if Aww. I die please someone tell my dad I mean, he knows but someone make sure if you come to my funeral and there's no Scooby in the coffin with me <laughs> be like Mr. Bridge go and get that Scooby you can't keep him Wendy needs him still We're causing a ruckus <laughs> at a funeral okay <laughs> <laughs> so I remember watching Scooby on Saturday mornings because I grew up when you can only see cartoons on Saturdays and I remember just like immediately falling in love with him because I love dogs and a talking dog was just like the greatest thing ever um but one of my favorite memories like Scooby-Doo memories was meeting Ron Campbell Ron Campbell was one of the original artists on Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? My husband saw something the day that we went. He, he said that, oh, there's the Scooby-Doo artist that's gonna be at a gallery, do you wanna go? And I'm like, yes, let's go. So we went and we got there, nobody else was there. So Ron Campbell and I just had this awesome conversation about his work on Scooby-Doo. My husband did not record it, which I was so annoyed, but, but he, he talked to me for a good hour about his work on Scooby-Doo and, and just, it was just amazing. It was really cool to talk to him. Sorry. I definitely remember the first episode that I ever watched and it was the one with the wolf man from Scooby-Doo, where are you? But the one that really hooked me and kind of what started it and kept me watching it was Witch, Witch is a Witch. I loved the witch. I loved the zombie. I, I just don't know why as a child I was so drawn to it and like started my love of witches and kind of like spooky stuff, which I do believe there's a Scooby-Doo to scary movie pipeline. I stand by it. But <clears throat> I don't know. It's just something about I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. Um, and then some of my favorite things in my Scooby collection would just be the ones that my loved ones have given me. Like my mom has given me so many different Scooby things over the years, whether it's the backpack or the remote holder, or just the little toy that had the pizza in its mouth and you would pull it and then it would shake and get back together. 
Um, my great grandfather, when he was still alive, he got me a Scooby Doo on like the boardwalk in Houston, Texas. And I think it had like a little candy cane. And then every year for Valentine's Day growing up, my dad would get me the little Scoobies that would sing and for like different holidays. So I think just the ones that my family members did will probably be my ones that I most cherish just because it reminds me of them and of Scooby and just tied all together my favorite people and my favorite things. Nice. Alexa? Um, I have fond memories of watching High Rise Hair Razor because that was... Um the VHS tape that my brother had because there's a huge age difference between my brother and I um so that was really I think what started it all um just watching that one and then the first Scooby item that I remember getting uh is jointly the snack and action game um and the um it was in my brain but uh this guy Oh, the snack attack, Scooby. Yeah, the snack attack one. Yeah. Um, I think I got those for one of my first birthdays. Like, I think I might have been three or four. I don't remember which one, but those ones for sure. Devin? Uh, I'm going to kind of do what Wendy did, just answer the same thing for all three questions. Um, <laughs> the, the memory that's coming to my mind is I was probably like maybe three or four and my parents dropped me off at their friend's house to babysit me for the day and like to stay the night there. And I remember he took me to Toys R Us and he was like, oh, you can get anything you want. And I remember like looking at all the scoop, there was like Scooby-Doo toys and I was like, oh my gosh. And I got the Charlie the Robot like figure. I still have it, it's literally on my desk over there. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Cause I loved watching Scooby-Doo. I couldn't tell you like the very beginning, like when I started watching it, but I always, I knew I loved it. And so I got that, that figure and I was like, oh my God, this is the best day ever. And then he took me over to his friend's house and they had ponies in their backyard and I got to ride the ponies. And then he took me back to his house to stay the night and he had a bunch of video games. And so I got to play this like snowboarding SSX tricky game all night on the PlayStation 2. And I was like, and play with my Scooby-Doo figures and it was the best day ever. <laughs> Leah? Oh gosh. It's like there's several memories coming into my mind. Um, one of the first ones, I can't say it's the first because I don't really remember what started my love for Scooby-Doo, but I definitely remember watching it on Boomerang as a kid because we had the Boomerang channel and I would get so mad like if they would say Scooby-Doo was going to be on and then play something else. I was like, it was the end of the world. Um, or when my parents decided to cancel cable and I was like, oh, what do you mean we're not going to have Boomerang anymore? And I'm like, I need my Scooby-Doo guys. Like you don't understand. <laughs> In terms of my favorite memories, I would have to say there's two. Um, growing up, I loved going to the Six Flags Park. I, there's actually one in the city I grew up in. Um, so I would ride the Scooby-Doo ride there like every time. Like that was really why I wanted to go to Six Flags. Like I never liked roller coasters. I get sick on them, but the Scooby-Doo ride every time. And I would read like all the character descriptions on the walls as you wait in line. And at the end there was this shop and it was, it was one of those, you know, little ride shops, but it was nothing but Scooby for the ride. And it was just like so amazing. And it felt so big. Like I've seen the room it used to be in now. It was tiny, but like as a kid, it felt like so big and like being told, okay, you can pick out like any Scooby you want from here. And it was just like, oh, and I think back like now if I was an adult like I would have bought like everything in that store and have no money <laughs> and then the other memory that I find and it's the one item I've tried to find for years and I can never find it so if any of y'all find it like hit me up please um as a kid I had a shirt it was light purple and it showed Scooby as like a like a soda hop I guess like like when you would have it like a car hop and like bringing out a milkshake and it says mm -hmm. soda hop on it and I would wear this shirt and I would play restaurant and I would like put my little Scooby blanket on the table and I would like draw up a menu and, you know, charge my parents a nickel for their own food that they bought. <laughs> and I just had such fond memories. And that shirt, like, I think it accidentally got ended up in a bag of like donate clothes years ago before I really started collecting and keeping my stuff. And it's, I have scoured the internet. I have yet to find a picture of that shirt, except for a few blurry pictures of me wearing it. But 
oh, I just have such happy memories with that, that item in particular. We came close to finding it, but it wasn't exact. Yeah, I was going to say, we've seen a couple like it. And like, I've seen the design on other items, like newer items, but I haven't found like that sure yet. And I, and I think it came from Walmart. Knowing my mom, it probably did. Oh, and I had a matching pair of little um, purple pants that said Scooby-Doo on the butt. Like, as a kid. <laughs> and like thinking now, like, that's just so funny. Like this little eight-year-old just walking around with Scooby-Doo on her butt. <laughs> <laughs> That was a weird kid, y'all. <laughs> Danny? Um, lucky for me, I have, there's not a lot of photos of me, but I have like a collection of like photos of me specifically with Scooby stuff when I was younger. So what introduced me to Scooby was that I was a Blues Clues kid. Um, and then basically it was just like, okay, now that you're three, let me show you this other talking dog. And I was like... <laughs> talking dog mysteries yeah uh, so that I was sold after that point um and I would say um my one of my first items there's probably two that I got I think like at the same time for my birthday um one is the Halloween costume of Scooby with like a little mask and it's just one of those little suits and then a backpack um both I still have um and it's like a orange and green backpack that I had for uh, elementary school that was like the size of my body uh, at the time but I still wore it of course <laughs> and then a memory I would say it's like like less just dis like distinct but like or less important I guess than some things have done some crazy scooby things um but I would remember uh we had like the living room and we had a coffee table and I would lie under the coffee table on my stomach with like my hands like this, like looking up at the TV, watching Scooby VHS. And then every so often I would just get up, run to the pantry and open it. And it had the little, they were, I think they were sugar cookie Scooby snacks, but they were round and I wish I had the box to them, but they, they were the, like the most delicious snacks ever. I'd grab a handful and then run back and then... <laughs> and watching <laughs> <laughs> they're they're the ones that like the box was purple right I think so there was like a light blue box too I remember it going back yeah. and, forth, and it was like in Canada I was in superstore so it was like this pretty big box mm -hmm. but they were like <laughs> light 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 like they had to be sugar cookies I really think they had to be sugar cookies no, <laughs> they were good. <laughs> All right, our next question. If you could go back in time and change one thing about Scooby-Doo, what would it be? Do Wendy's I need laughing. to answer this, Nikki? Do I need yeah. to? Yeah. I mean, I would get rid of Crystal and Amber. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, okay, guys. I feel like that movie had such potential to be one that I would really, really like. So like I said, I I really like alien related things, Roswell, X-Files. I mean, I love it. And I just wish that they would have left romance. I mean, they to tell you the truth, you could even leave Amber and Crystal in, just remove the romance aspect of it because I've thought a lot about it since I went on my rant, my anti-Crystal and Amber rant. And I have realized that the reason that I disliked it so much is that, number one, I saw in real life how people are really good friends and then all of a sudden somebody gets a boyfriend or a girlfriend and next thing you know, like your friends don't matter anymore because you're so like all encompassed in this new person, which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but they kind of did that in the show where all of a sudden like Scooby and Shaggy are even thinking about leaving the gang. And I'm like, okay, maybe in real life, but this isn't real life. This is a show that I just want to enjoy and you threatening to break up my happy gang. It just made me angry. It really did. So I just, I wish that they would not have done that with those characters. I kind of just wish that they'd have made like, guy aliens because apparently guys and girls can't be friends like I don't know I 
didn't think that was a thing, but apparently it is. And I just feel like that movie could have been so much better without the romance aspect and just stick to something spooky and alien. Like they really could have gone scary with that and, and very like out there, you know? And I just kind of feel like it was a missed opportunity because they tried to put in something that wasn't really a part of Scooby, the romance stuff. And then they dialed it up to like 11. Like it wasn't even just like a little bit like we get with Fred and Daphne, you know, it was like crank it right up, make it as extreme as possible. Uh, and then even though I was thrilled at the end when Amber and Crystal leave and we know that Shaggy and Scooby will not be leaving the gang, if I had been a fan of the romance, that would have upset me too. Because I'd have been like, well, why did you give Shaggy like his supposed perfect match and then like rip her away from him? So to me, it was like a lose-lose situation all the way around. I would just remove those characters, replace them with something totally different and redo the movie, keep the movie. The movie itself was good, but just change those two characters, get rid of the romance and just go straight, straight Roswell. That song was a bop, though. I mean, it was a, a bop good... out to the trash can. Yes, <laughs> That's about it. Get us started. I think I liked them because I wanted to be like as a kid. I wanted to be the one marrying Shaggy with the tie dye wedding. <laughs> so yeah, I was, that's why I that liked I them. I wanted to be. <laughs> but I totally get where you're coming from on that. <laughs> I would have made Scooby Dumb and Scooby D recurring characters, but I would not have had Scooby D be a love interest for Scooby Doo and Dumb because I just think that's weird. I just think it's weird. Yeah. But <laughs> but having them recur as recurring characters and be part of the entire series would be really cool. Tori, I think I would have reworked Scoob. Um, that's one of my personal movies that I was so looking forward to like another big screen release even though COVID happened whatever but it looked like there was lots of time money they'd gotten some big names onto it so I was very excited for it and I was like okay it's gonna be mainstream again we're gonna have like another Scooby live action experience where everyone loves it it's fantastic reinvigorates the series um, and then I went and saw it and I just and I don't know if it's just me but I absolutely hated it I just ooh, I, I hated it it felt like a Hanna-Barbera, like multiverse Marvel experience where they were trying to fit so many different characters. Like Captain Caveman. I don't, I don't care about Captain Caveman. I don't want to see him in my Scooby movie. The Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt, like, okay, but like I'm a Scooby person. And like having the gang be split for so much of that movie, I, I was just so disappointed on so many different levels. And I just wish it could have been something different. And I'm holding out hope for this Scoob holiday haunt because baby scooby i would die for that yeah. animation of baby scooby was one of the cutest things i've ever seen in my life so i'm hoping that i will like holiday haunt but man if we could rework scooby just to be more about the gang i don't know i would have redone let's just scrap that whole movie pretend it didn't happen <laughs> make another yeah. start well, over well <laughs> what I'll say about Scoob too, I absolutely hated it as well. I, sorry to anybody that likes it. I just like did not like it at all. Um, I think the main problem with it, like I get the whole multiverse thing because that's just like how movies work now for some reason is every property from a company has to be connected for some reason. I don't like that aspect of it, but I get that what they were trying to do. But I think the main problem with it is it just like wasn't like scary or spooky and there wasn't really like a monster. It just didn't like feel like 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 scooby-doo really you know what i mean it just felt like totally off base like if they wanted to include captain caveman and like blue falcon whatever i don't want it but like i guess they could do that but do it in a better way where it's more of a scooby movie with them in it not so much this weird superhero thing that i don't like scoob was good when they were little like when they were kids but after that part it all went downhill the only cool thing about it was all the references to, to other things Super that were cool. in it. But, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, it wasn't great. <laughs> Alexa, if you could go back in time and change one thing about Scooby-Doo, what would it be? I would go back and finish The 13 Ghosts while it was airing. 
to eliminate the need of the Curse of the 13th Ghost movie. Uh, or from today's lens, I would go back and tweak episodes that are racist, sexist, etc. Um, and just fix those up a little bit. Seven. Uh, third live action Scooby Doo movie. Yes. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> they could still do that. They could still do <laughs> that. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Leah. Uh, I think for me, I would love to see more episodes of the original series. Um, and I know that there's the Scooby-Doo show. I think for some reason, when I was watching it growing up, it was always Where Are You that was played on TV. And then just some of the voice actor changes between Where Are You and the Scooby-Doo show, like, just bothered me when I was a kid because it was like, this doesn't feel right. So I would have loved to extend, like, the Scooby-Doo Where Are You? And I would absolutely trade, like, those 80s years with like and I'm not saying I don't like Scrappy-Doo because Scrappy-Doo is fine but like the mini episodes where it's like Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy and they're like not even solving mysteries and they're basically homeless living out of their van and they're going to space one year or they're having dreams about the founding fathers one time like I would trade like all of those to get some more where are you and then I think while I was there, I would fix this one glaring animation error that always drove me nuts as a kid. And it's it's in the Captain Cutler episode, A Clue for Scooby-Doo. And it's when they're underwater and Shaggy sits on that rock. And then they, like, you see his face, but he's got Fred's hair color. And I remember being as a yeah. kid like, that's the wrong color, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I would go back and fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Danny um yeah I would go without saying that I would uh I would fix up some of the stereotypical racism um and I would say nowadays the sexualization or like the stupid like oh the girls have to be in love with somebody yeah. plot line things um but I would say in in more of a like <laughs> the world doesn't have issues way um it would either be uh get rid of the retcons like uh curse of the 13th ghost and zombie island or uh make sure people give be cool scooby-doo a better friggin chance man like <laughs> i don't know if that counts man but <laughs> like, i i would have taken more of that series in a friggin heartbeat yeah it would be nice if people would look at Be Cool Scooby-Doo differently now, but like even John Colton Berry said, like they kind of ruined it by coming out with the animation a year before the show came out. And then people had a year to hate the animation and then refuse to give the show a try. Mm -hmm. But it's funny. It is really funny. And yeah, I think people should just watch it. Lighthearted. Just watch just watch a couple episodes and like you don't have to like it, but at least give it a try. I feel like that's kind of what's going to happen with the Velma show. I don't know how to feel about it yet because we've only seen like one picture, but I feel like that's what's going to happen yeah. is like they show a picture and then everybody's going to judge it from that and they're like I'm not going to watch it or like, you know, I feel like it's going to it's kind of off to a bad start already. <laughs> well, I think away. it's like, like a sensational picture for the Velma show too, like like surely the whole show isn't like that like they just had to pick like yeah. the, the craziest shot like and I think it's sort of to garner that media attention hopefully that doesn't oh, yeah. But, oh yeah, absolutely I don't either. it's just so it's funny like, that they're like r-rated bad stuff by the way we have a little kids show coming out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what is going on it's like opposite ends of the spectrum here it's like <laughs> I have one other thing I would change also that I just thought of. Um, I would make it just like the same canon throughout all of Scooby-Doo because there's too many origin stories and things like that. It'd be nice to just like have one story and that's it. And it just works. Yeah, that would be good. Another thing that you had mentioned, Devin, before would be to have Betty White as a guest star on the new Scooby-Doo movies. And I definitely would have done that because she would have been so awesome to be on the new Scooby-Doo movies and then have her on again and guess who? That would have been so cool. Yeah. Oh, and maybe I would uh, redo the Hex Girls episode of Guess Who. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We could probably talk about this on a panel, like all of the things <laughs> that we would change about Scooby Doo. Yeah. So true. I could think of other ones too. I'm sitting there going, hmm, I would change this. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa for the next question um, which reoccurring or one off side character would you bring back to the series or in a movie uh, and why or what would you want to see definitely Scooby D because even above Scooby she is my favorite character from the entire franchise I do love her um, I kind of feel like her episode, Chiller Diller Movie Thriller, where like she's an actress. It starts out where she's, you know, they're filming her. I kind of would like to see just that base idea expanded where Scooby D is filming a movie. Maybe the film set is haunted. Maybe, you know what I mean? Like whatever, there's a spooky thing going on where they're filming that's preventing them from filming. And then the gang gets involved as like maybe extras in the movie and they're all filming together. I think that that like a, like a filming episode starring Scooby-Dee who's starring in the film in the show would be like the best, like that would be my favorite kind of dream episode for her. And just kind of in general, I think that would be a lot of fun. I feel like it'd be like Return to Zombie Island kind of. If they did it now. I don't know. No. <laughs> like, mm, but then you'd have to, like, you'd have to then, Milo Booth would have had to have been real in the first one, though. Because the whole thing about Return to Zombie Island was supposed to be like, oh, you were, like, hallucinating or something. Or what, what, you know what I mean? Like, oh, that didn't actually happen, you know? So I wouldn't mm. have her filming the same movie, you know? just a yeah. different movie and once again the same premise where they've come to watch her and they have to help get the movie going because something is haunting it <laughs> don't worry i would never make I anything like, like return to zombie island <laughs> <laughs> so i agree with wendy i would want them to bring back scooby d um but another thing that i had mentioned in a different panel is I would like them to bring Scrappy back. And I know that's surprising, but bring Scrappy back, but put him in an anti-bullying campaign because I really don't feel like they could just bring him back. Like he needs to redeem himself. So create a whole anti-bullying campaign with Scrappy and he's making amends with everyone that he's bullied. And, and I think that would be good. Tori? I liked a lot of the side characters in Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, but I don't know how you would incorporate those into anything else unless you made more like seasons of Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, which I think you totally could based on that ending of them going to like the different universes. That could be my multiverse of madness is just Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. Um, but otherwise, maybe the ghoul school gals. Uh, I really liked those. I don't think they're in a lot of other episodes. Like, you know, the Hex Girls go through the series. I think it'd be cool to see like the cool school girls get some more, some more love because they were really fun. I loved that movie. So, Alexa? Um, well, my top would be Scooby Dumb and Scooby D. But I think it would be fun if they did like just a family reunion, like a la Wedding Bell Booze. And I don't know, yeah. I like the idea that like all of the gang's family are friends. So then it could be like family members from each member of the gang that just came together for this like wild family reunion. Um, I think that would be fun. <laughs> and like the, the hotel that it's at is haunted or something. Um, <laughs> or also the ghoul school girls. Well, we know that Warner Brothers is not capable of doing reunions very well for Scooby-Doo. So yeah yeah, yeah. Bad. Bad. <laughs> seven uh I've got three um first one just I feel like the boo brothers might be fun to bring back no nothing specific with them but it just bring them back for a little bit would be kind of fun um two red herring I feel like he would make total sense to bring back I think I think he should have been Seth Green Patrick Seth Green's character in the second Scooby-Doo movie I feel like yeah. that should have been red herring 
And in my mind, I like to pretend that it is, but they couldn't call him that because it's more for adults and they'd be like, this is a little too on the nose, pretty easy. But I like to think that canonically he is red herring. Um, and then this isn't really a side character, but it'd be interesting to do like on the topic of like the multiverse thing, because that's how everything works now, is it'd be cool to see all the different incarnations of Scooby-Doo in like a movie together. You know what I mean? Like bring Be Cool and Mystery Incorporated and like, where are you? And like all the different art styles like together for something like that. I feel like it'd be kind of cool. Leah? Scooby Dunn would be my top one for sure. Like, I feel cheated that we only got him in four episodes because he's just, he's so cute. And like, his personality is so funny. And like, his little catchphrase is like, thump, thump, thump. like, I just love him. It's like more Scooby to love. Um, I definitely agree with the ghoul school girls, especially like seeing him like a little older would be super cool to see. Um, there was another one. I just had it. I lost my train of thought. What was it? It was something off of what Devin is. Oh, I remember now. So like in Cyber Chase, like where we see the original gang, we have the gang and then we have the cyber gang. I think that would be cool to see something with that. And I know it's definitely not side character because it's just a different version of the main characters, but it would be cool to see like more of that, like kind of like their old character versus like their new characters, like bouncing off each other. I think that could be fun. I I'm kind of surprised that honestly, I don't know if I want to see it, but I'm surprised since they've done a couple of remakes, you know, with 13 Ghosts and Zombie Island, they haven't done like a cyber chase thing because like video games yeah. are like as popular as ever. So I'm surprised they haven't done something with that now, you know? Well, the technology is so advanced now, they could almost make it believable. <laughs> yeah. And they should make a new Scooby-Doo video game also. Like it's been a while, yeah. we should get a new one. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I want like an open world Coolsville or something. I feel like that'd be really cool. <laughs> Ooh. Danny, which recurring character would you like to see them bring back? Um, my mine's a one-off, and it's in a very specific way. I really liked Googie, um, less as uh, Shaggy's girlfriend and more as herself. Um, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like it, what made me think of a cool way to bring her back would be like you know how. Nancy Drew has like uh, George and, you know, and like the Hardy Boys have like Chet. So she is a friend of the whole gang who every so often comes up, comes up or is handy to have around and she helps and then she can like go and do her own thing again. Just cause I just like, she was so cute. I liked her little outfits and everything. And she was like actually decently resourceful on herself and, and everything. So I don't know. I'd like her to be like a character instead of a girlfriend um, and just have her just be helpful and show up just to be cute and <laughs> helpful. <laughs> All right. Our next question. What is the weirdest thing you have done to get Scooby merchandise? Done anything weird to get Scooby stuff? I honestly, I don't know that I've done anything weird. Um, I mean, it's weird to me that I was willing to shell out like $104 to buy the animated telephone. I'm still like, wow, did you really do that? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, honestly, like, I don't, I don't think I've ever done anything weird. Like, it, it was kind of weird to like, go to the dollar store and buy one of these like foam heads because I will admit <laughs> it, people were like staring at me walking out of the store with it you know what I mean and I was like I'm totally getting that from my Daphne wig and just gonna like repaint it and make it like a little Daphne head um it's kind of kind of weird I don't know honestly I really don't I don't think I've done anything that's like weird I really haven't. That's really boring, but yeah, I haven't done anything weird. Just just having a severed Daphne head in my <laughs> closet is a bit odd, but. <laughs> All right. So when I got the wardrobe that's behind me, and this is in one of my Closer Look videos, I drove to New Hampshire with my husband to pick it up. And the people told us to pull into their garage and I like pulled in front of it and they're like, no, back up. And I'm like, this isn't a good idea. My husband's like, oh, it's fine. So I backed up. So I was halfway in and halfway out. They're like, no, pull all the way in. And I'm like, this is not a good idea. 
my husband's like no no it's good it's fine so I pull in their garage and they shut the door which means we're locked in their garage not a good thing to do people don't let someone lock you in their garage I've called it the murder garage ever since because I have no idea like if they would have done something to us one of the first things I said to them was that we were meeting somebody in a half an hour for lunch which was true I have a friend in Massachusetts and we were meeting him for lunch but I wanted them to know that because I didn't want them to think that oh you came from Pennsylvania no one's going to know where you are and no one's going to care for at least, you know, how many hours. So, yeah. <laughs> but we made it out alive and I have a cool Scooby wardrobe. So, yay. <laughs> at least you could have like taken them with you. You just go and start your car. Yeah. But I don't yeah. know, like if their garage door, it, like if I could have actually like driven through their garage. Oh, I meant just sure. like if, if they're going to kill you, you take them with you and you all oh. get monoxide poisoning. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, that I don't know if any of that quick. sounds like a good idea, but okay. Yeah. Only as a yeah. last resort. It's not like the first thing you do. Oh. True. <laughs> 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 Tori, what is something weird that you've done to get Scooby merchandise? I mean, I feel like I just go on eBay like regular. <laughs> um, I mean, I did get a Scooby-Doo tattoo. I don't know if that's considered merchandise. And I feel like that may be a little farther, a little weirder because it's a permanent um, item on your body. And a guy got into a fight with like the tattoo owner while I was there so that was a little weird um it was Friday the 13th it was the 50th anniversary of Scooby-Doo I had to get it that night so I made sure the shop wasn't doing Friday the 13th tattoos so that they could have time to like do my Scooby tattoo without a weird 13 in it because I just wanted my tattoo how I wanted it and it had to be that day it was like a whole thing um and yeah he thought that that store was doing Friday the 13th tattoos and they very clearly were not so he thought he was getting like a $20 tattoo and the guy wanted $200. It was like a whole thing. My dad was with me. Thank goodness. Cause they were like about to go toe to toe in the parking lot. And my dad's like trying to get in on it. And I'm like, dad, no, we cannot get into like tattoo fights. Like <laughs> focus, we're here for Scooby. So that's probably like the weirdest situation doing something Scooby related. That's interesting. That's that's a great story, though. It's a great story. Yeah, <laughs> it was something. <laughs> Alexa, um, it's not necessarily weird to me, but I feel like the people that I'm messaging are like, "What?" When I um go on like Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace or sites like that and look like three provinces away and find something that I want and I'm like hey would you mail this to me or like possibly wait until I can drive out there um or um another one is just like spontaneous road trips finding something like two hours away and just being like I'm gonna go get this now I have the day off whatever <laughs> um the sketchiest part of that was not telling anyone that I was going um but it worked out fine. So, you know, don't recommend doing that though. Tell someone where you're going. <laughs> oh yeah, always. <laughs> Devin, and this can be, for you, this can be any merchandise because I know that you collect oh, other things. Why do you other think about any of that? <laughs> so it, it, can, it can be Scooby related or it can be other related or you can tell us stories about both. To be honest, I was literally about to say, I'm surprised that I don't have a story about anything Scooby-Doo related that's been that weird. Because I, I was like, I've got stories about a lot of things, but I was like, Scooby-Doo, I don't know, I buy it online or I'll find it at like an antique store or a thrift store or something, but that's about it. But like other stuff, uh, come back to me at the end. Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Leah? Oh gosh, I would say the two weirdest would be um, the time I was, um, I picked up like a big lot of Scooby-Doo stuff. It was the lady that was selling most of her collection. I guess she needed the money. And, but it was definitely in like a shadier area of town and we kind of got a little lost and they were just people I found on Facebook marketplace and my husband at the time we were just dating and he's probably sitting there thinking I'm driving this girl into like the bad side of town 
to meet people we don't know. Like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Probably scared them off. But thank God they were like super nice people. And like, I was even like sending her pictures of the stuff on my shelf. That way she knew like, I wasn't just going to like turn around and sell it and make a bunch of money that it was, it was going to be in good hands, like with somebody who would appreciate it. Um, the other weird one was when the theme park was closing down the Scooby-Doo ride at Six Flags in my town. Um, my husband and I actually went, again, we were still dating. Um, we went the weekend that it was closing, like it's last open weekend. And after we rode on it, and then after I rode on another ride with him and got sick and almost scared him off there, <laughs> we went to the front, like to the customer service. And I asked them like, if they would be willing to sell any parts of the ride. Like I low key just wanted one of those like mystery machine ride cars, like sitting in my house. And I don't even know where I would have put it. I was in a one bedroom apartment at the time, but I would have taken anything from that ride. <laughs> and they're like, no, we can't really do that. But for your trouble, we could give you like a free fast pass to go ride it again and put the line. And I'm like, I'll take that. Yeah. that. <laughs> but yeah, I think they probably thought I was crazy. Although I've talked to Cam and he says he did the same thing, but he asked if he could buy any of the parts. And I'm like, well, I'm glad I'm not the only one who tried to do that. <laughs> Danny? <sighs> You know, trying to ask me what I do, that's weird, like probably a lot, but in my point of view, I'm like, eh, what is, I'm collecting, <laughs> get out of my way. Um, uh, some of the weirdest reactions I've got is when I try to get a box um, from the store and they're like, why, you want the box? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want the box. And I'm taking that, I want the whole thing. And they're like, okay, box lady. <laughs> I'm like, let it go. But I think the most like, drastic thing I've done is um taking a very sudden um six hour drive like <laughs> with some friends to go and buy somebody's like pretty much entire Scooby collection um and then having to immediately turn around and go back because I had work <laughs> oh my God. so uh that's probably like the most drastic um thing but I don't know all of it seems so normal that I'm like I don't know <laughs> look for scoops everywhere ask for scoops everywhere so the Always furthest good. I've ever driven for Scooby was when we went to Scott Innes's Christmas party it was a 26 hour drive we drove straight through went to the Christmas party slept overnight in a hotel and then drove 26 hours back oh wow yeah. that was I guess that was pretty crazy that's dedication to Scooby. Are you right a, an airplane not fan, or was that like? I, I am not a fan of airplanes. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Stop. Blame you. Devin, did you think of anything? See, that's the thing. Is it's nothing is like weird to me. It's just like I'm collecting things, and I happen to find them sometimes in weird places. You know, um, like the only couple things I can think of that, like off the top of my head, I'm sure I'm sure there's weird things that I've like done to try to find stuff. But like, I'm looking at this, okay, should I just grab it really quick? Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. What are we gonna see? What do you, okay, what do you guys think you're gonna see? <laughs> I don't know, but I know it's gonna be something interesting with you. Okay, um, so I was at a garage sale with my parents and I went into the basement of this garage sale. It was like one of these things where it was an older couple and like one of them passed away, I think, or maybe both of them passed away, I don't know, and the kids were selling the house and like pretty much everything inside of it. And they hired like a retail company to like sell all their stuff at a garage sale for them because they didn't want to do it. So I went in the basement and like, it was this like dark little corner of the basement and it was like next to the washer and dryer. And then on top of a shelf and next to the washer and dryer was this KFC bucket. <laughs> and it, it's from when KFC literally first opened. Like it's from like the fifties. Like it's, I, I don't know if you want to see it inside. It's got chicken grease stains on it. Um, oh, wow. but like, I was like, oh my God, what the heck is this? There was no price on it. So I just grabbed it and brought it upstairs. And I was like asking the people that were running the sale about it. And they were like, they're like, oh, why do you want that? They're like, we were about to throw that. We were going to throw it in the trash. Like we didn't get to that yet or whatever. And I was like, throw it in the garbage. I was like, this is like the original thing. Like, and I was like, like, why is this just sitting down there? And they were like, well, apparently they knew the story about it, but they were going to throw in the garbage. They were like, oh, the old couple like went there when KFC first opened and then they thought it was cool and they just brought it back home and set mm -hmm. it on that shelf. 
and it sat on that shelf until I took it off that shelf and brought it home with me. Wow. And they were going to throw it away, but then they ended up charging me $10 for it still. And I was oh like, all right, I'll take it. $10? <laughs> wow. For your wheeling well, and dealing skills. Oh. I, well, that's the thing is they were like, we're going to throw it away. And then the lady was like, you got to pay for it though. And I was like, what? And they were like, you can have it for 10 bucks. And I was like, I'm just not going to argue. I'll just take it. These like, whatever. <laughs> I could see them charging you a dollar for something the that they were going to throw away, but $10. They knew that I yeah. knew it was something important. <laughs> yeah. Um, you gave okay. it away. Never and, give and it away. You have I've, no been video a lot. <laughs> I've been to a lot of garage sales. And the, and the ones where they're run by a company and not the people, it's you can't really negotiate with them really because yeah. it's like, no, that's the set price. So I was like, I'm not going to like argue with it. I'm just going to get take the bucket or whatever. And I like it. I'm like 10 bucks. Like, I don't care. Whatever. It's not that bad. Um, <laughs> Take the bucket. I've, I've definitely dumpster dived sometime, like a couple times, like in like those big, like when it's, it's a friend's friends and family friends dumpsters I've done it in where they like are like throwing a bunch of stuff out. And it's one of those like really huge ones you rent. And I'm like, um, let me look through that and see if there's anything good you guys are getting rid of. And I remember it was probably, I was probably like a freshman in high school and it was a family friend and like their I don't remember someone in their family had passed away and they were getting rid of a bunch of stuff and they thought it was all garbage I was looking through it and then I pulled out all these like hangers with like coats on them and he was like and the guy like he didn't know because people were just throwing stuff away he's literally like those are my grandpa's like world war ii like uniforms or whatever and I was like I pulled them out of the dumpster I'm like they're just gonna throw them away for you like so like obviously I didn't keep my game back to him. He's like, why are they just throwing stuff away? I'm like, that's why you got to be watching, you know. Wow. And wow. then the only other thing that just came to my mind was um, some friends and friends of mine and I, when we were in high school, probably illegal. Don't do this. But we were like, it was like the middle of the night. It was like two in the morning, and we parked at a parking lot near a dump, <laughs> and we walked through the woods to the dump, which you're probably not supposed to do. But we were just like, we're like trying to see if they had any fun stuff that we could take. And I'm like, it's the garbage. Who cares? I'm, I'm allowed to take stuff. Like, whatever. There wasn't anything really that good. But I found a couple little, like, uh, cowboy Indian action figure, like, the little plastic ones from, like, way back in the day. I found a couple of those. And um, a mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> and I took the mailbox. And I put it in the back of my friend's car because he drove. And then I just never took it out for some reason. And every time I'd see him, he'd be like, you need to take that mailbox out of my car. And I was like, no. And he literally kept it in the back of his Jeep for like six years until he sold the car. Oh and he God. sold the car with the mailbox in it. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. Hilarious. <laughs> That's about as weird as I guess I can think of anything at the moment. So, yeah. can, Nikki, can I add something that it wasn't me that did it? but it was for me. And so it's something in my own collection that one of my friends did that was a little weird. So they make those big Scooby greeters and they have them for different seasons. And one day my friend who used to live about five minutes up the road from me, her parents still live there. Uh, she lives in Missouri now. And her and her husband went to Walmart one day and I get this picture of her husband holding this giant Scooby greeter who is dressed in like this pink bunny outfit. It's got the big ears and everything and it's so cute. And she says, oh, we saw this and and we knew we had to get it for you. And I'm thinking like, how are you gonna, how are you gonna get that here from Missouri? Like they're always flying and stuff. And I wish so bad that she had taken a picture but she carried that giant Scooby greeter on the plane with her. So I don't know if she just held it in her seat or made her husband hold it or what, but I, I think that would be weird to everyone around seeing this grown woman carrying this giant Scooby toy on a plane all the way from Missouri to Northern Ontario, Canada, just to bring it to me. And I was like, thank you so much. And just as a fun extra, she actually messaged me last week and she says, I saw a kid at church this morning that had a Scooby toy. I almost swiped it, but don't worry, I didn't. <laughs> Moments like that. Just to clarify, she I never would there. do that. It was she said it for fun, but I, I was like, yeah, I, I actually reply, I was like, well, you're a better person than I am. I probably <laughs> would have. No, I wouldn't, but anyway. Yeah, so there that's, was that's um, my weird story. 
we went to go do uh, a shoot somewhere for work, uh, a video shoot that is, and um, it was at like a family place. Um, and there was like an area for kids and there was like this Scooby 24 piece puzzle that I didn't have. And I was like, could I, could I take this? That's a bad idea, but I really would like to. Oh my gosh, I love that. I didn't, but I wanted to. (laughs) Alexa, next question. And the next question is, if you could design a piece of Scooby-Doo merchandise, what would it be? I would actually like to see, I would like to see a Scooby-Doo version of this particular figure, because to me, my own opinion, that is the nicest most screen accurate Scooby-Doo figure that I have ever seen. I think it's the perfect size. It's not too small, but it's not so big that you can't display it. A Scooby-Doo though, in this style would be like the ultimate collectible in my opinion for me. Yeah, that would be cool. For me, I want a 20 foot weatherproof Scooby that I could have in my yard that everyone can see because he'd, he'd be so cool but yeah I I just want like a 20 foot Scooby-Doo I think that would be so cool Tori I don't know I'm thinking with like how great robotics is now this would be very expensive and no one could afford it but having like a life-size robotic Scooby that you could like control maybe it has some catchphrases but it's also soft it can like chill with you on the couch. You can go sleep with it, bring it to work, walk it around town. I don't know. It's not like, I guess you could just get a dog, but hmm, this would be a robot. That sounds like Scooby Doo. So that's, I mean, I'm thinking at least 3K, but it would be worth it. It definitely would be worth it. Alexa? I'd like to make a line of statues of the villains where like the front half is like the ghost and then if you turn it around it was like the unmasking scene i think that would be really cool yeah 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 devin well that's a great idea (laughs) and i like that so i'm not going to take that one and i like the robotics idea so i'm also going to expand on that and say a charlie the robot robot Yes. It doesn't have to be life size or anything, but it'd be cool if you could like make him like walk. You know what I mean? I feel like that'd be kind of cool. And then not necessarily something I want, but they should do like a race car bed that's the mystery machine. What do you mean that's not something you want? <laughs> I mean, I would <laughs> love that. Yeah, I, that. Want I mean, like, that. I don't want that. Like that sounds great. <laughs> I was I'm, like, sorry, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Leah. Um, I think I would like to see, and maybe it exists and I just haven't seen it for Scooby-Doo, but you know those puzzles where it's like lots of tiny little pictures of like characters or like scenes from a show and then like they're all different like colors so it comes together and makes one big picture. I would mm-hmm. love to see something like that for Scooby-Doo with like the original like where are you Scooby-Doo show like clips as like the little pictures and then maybe it makes like a big Scooby or something. I don't know, but that would be so fun to me. I would so enjoy putting that together and like looking at every piece and trying to figure out oh this is this episode with this scene and like that would be so much fun (laughs) danny um i would want like really high quality set of figures that are the gang from pup name scooby-doo and probably a red herring in there too if we can but just like not even like very big just like that and like Mm. super detailed Mm -hmm. all together I think they'd be so cute yeah I'm also gonna throw that Scooby-Doo video game I mentioned that's open world into this I want them to make (laughs) I'm surprised they didn't make a new Scooby video game yet I mean Mm, with all the all the different Scooby things that they've put out you would think they would have made a video especially for Scoob because they really put a lot into advertising Scoob. Mm -hmm. Sure they were going to do one for Scoob. I don't know how they do it but it'd be really cool if it had that similar art style to like where are you where it's very like painty looking and dark but like also vibrant and like 
it'd be interesting if they could figure out how to make the characters actually look like flat cartoons while making it still look 3D world-ish. I don't know how they'd do that, but I feel like that'd be kind of cool too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, for like a Nintendo Switch, because I see like there's lots of like little indie games that come up for the Switch, mm -hmm. and I feel like that would be a really good market, especially since the Switch is very family friendly, kid friendly, and you can get a little bit more creative. That'd be a cool game for that console. They need to get I, on it. <laughs> I would like to see a Scooby Doo version of Animal Crossing, like oh, with that game. It, mm -hmm. Instead of having the animals, it could be like villains and side characters but they could saw look for clues and stuff like that within the game. I mean, it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Our next question. If you were forced to eliminate every Scooby-Doo possession from your life, with the exception of what you could fit into a single backpack, what would you put in it? Oh, God. That's so. I feel like you, like you did me dirty on that, Nikki. Because how am I going to get that giant Scooby in a backpack? You get a full <laughs> hey, backpack. That's what you. What are those like camping backpacks? Oh, maybe the one like where you have a kid. And you, and <laughs> there, yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, and, and, and on the front of you. That would be yeah. That would be it. That would be the solution. Put the big one in like the front facing one. Um. <laughs> I would definitely grab everything. I feel like the majority of my vintage items are on the smaller side. I'm quite confident that I could fit every single vintage item I have carefully into a backpack. I'm pretty sure that I could. So there would be a mixture of like little records and figures and comic books. Um, although to be honest, I don't think I'd waste room on comic books. Like I like comic books, but it's got to be a cheap one for me to get it. Um, so maybe I wouldn't waste room on that. Definitely would grab a couple of my favorite like Warner Brothers studio store beanies. Like I love this little, this little vampire one where he's got like the little gray cape. It's my favorite one. Um, somewhere I have like my year 2000 um, graduation Scooby beanie which was a gift from my mom and dad. And that was also the year, it was the year that I graduated from grade eight. It was the year that my mom passed away. So he's very, very special to me. Um, yeah, any any of like my, my figures, figures are my thing. I like figures, I love plushes as well, but they're a little bit on the large side sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I'd find some way to cheat and be like just, <laughs> I'm the backpack and I'm just going to stuff that giant Scooby like up my shirt or something. And <laughs> that's what's happening. <laughs> I would also take all of my vintage stuff. Um, but in addition to that, I would need to have my Scooby-Doo stapler because that's one of my favorite things. And this plush would have to go in there because he is just so cute. I just love him so much. Um, other than that, I guess just, oh, probably all of the artwork that I have, like all the cells and, and all that stuff that I have, I, I would need to take that stuff too. Tori? So I would be wearing my custom Scooby-Doo birthday t-shirt. Nice. My backpack would be the orange messenger backpack that said Tori on it from elementary school. And in it, I would stuff my Scooby mugs because I have one from my fiance and I have one from my very best friends that they've given me. They would fit very easily. I think I would do, um, I've got a little Scooby figurine that sings. It's like a Valentine Scooby. He's got to be like this tall. He'd fit in there. I'd probably try and throw my little pizza Scooby because again, real tiny. And I could probably fit a couple more of like the little smaller trinket doodads, little figurines, Funko Pops, that sort of thing. Um, but those would probably be the ones that have the most sentimental value to me. So I think I could easily fit those in that little messenger bag. Alexa? Also have to say my vintage Scooby stuff and like the lunch boxes. You take the lunch boxes, put Christmas ornaments in them, and then put those in the backpack. Um, also this deck of cards, the war with um, mm -hmm. the Scooby D and Scooby Dumb cards. Um, as many VHS tapes as I could fit. And um, 
I think the plushes that I had when I was a kid and the um, figures from when I was a kid, the one that like has like Charlie the robot and like the 10,000 volt ghost and things like that. Seven. Honestly, I don't have a lot of Scooby-Doo stuff. I have a lot of stuff, but like, I'm very peculiar about everything I get, you know? Um, a lot of my stuff is at my parents' house and all of it fits in like one tub. And that all is from like when I was a kid. And honestly, I bet if I tried, I could probably fit most of it into a backpack. A lot of VHS tapes, a lot of like the figures, like Charlie the Robot and the T Witch Doctor and like 10,000 Volt Ghosts and like all that stuff. I got a bunch of those. Um, I got a couple Scooby-Doo t-shirts. Uh, my wife got me one for Christmas. It says Dinkley Brigade from the second Scooby-Doo movie. Um, I've got a couple of my friends have given me. They're like funny ones. I'd probably put those in there. Uh, I put this record in there from the first movie. Um, and then my Scooby-Doo Meets the Boo Brothers laser disc. <laughs> Leah? Gosh, I, I would have to have like a really big backpack, first of all, for this. <laughs> but um, definitely my vintage. Like y'all said, a lot of mine are smaller. Like I have uh, vintage stamps from the 80s, like Scooby and Scrappy. They're real little. Um, books. I have a little plastic cup. I think it's from 76 and it has like all the different characters on it. Definitely throw that in there. Um, my animation cell for sure. And I think if I could take it out of the frame, I would, I could fit it in a backpack. No problem. Um, it's a pup named Scooby-Doo one and it's signed. So I yeah. absolutely could not get rid of that. Um, probably a few sentimental Scoobies here and there. Definitely my Scooby-Doo Converse, although I like to think if I'm going somewhere with a backpack full of Scooby stuff, I'll just be wearing my Converse because I wear them like basically every day. And then I would probably throw a bunch of my Scooby-Doo socks in there because that's like, I love Scooby-Doo socks. Like every time I see a pair of socks, I'm like, I have to have them. And it's like, but you have so many socks. And it's like, but I have more. Like it's <laughs> fine. And since it's clothing, I can put it in the clothing budget instead of my fun money for my Scoobies. So it's fine. And so I was just like, girl, like whatever I could room where there was left would probably just be a Scooby socks or wrap the valuables in the socks so they don't get broken. You know, I try to pack as much in there as I could. Danny? Uh, just kill me. Don't ask. <laughs> kill me? <laughs> like, don't. <laughs> like, there's like oh gosh like everything I put in like I'm like so obsessed with that like even being like okay quick name some you like and I'm like eh, eh, eh. <laughs> <laughs> um I guess yeah if I could my art cell my boo brothers art cell um if I could take it um the memorial photo for um Don Messick signed by I will, if I can get that in backpack safely. Um, oh, it would probably be a lot of plush, especially, um, I have a double of him, but the little vintage, these are specifically called the vintage one, uh, <laughs> plush. Oh no, <laughs> worst question I am at answering. <laughs> um, I have a Scooby purse that's like a plush purse um I love that to death for some reason specifically my viewmaster binoculars <laughs> just because I'm like what the what they were kind of so in worst case scenario I then have something that's useful <laughs> um <laughs> like all my other answers are eloquent and this one is just kill me I'm not gonna <laughs> kill <laughs> <laughs> oh and my stamps I have like wooden stamps I really love stationery so I'd probably find an excuse to bring those too you just have to have multiple backpacks and you could have one on the back and one on the front and then I don't know yeah. a and on each 17 in a car <laughs> yeah and this is how I felt packing my stuff like when we moved about two months ago I was like trying to like like somebody said the lunchbox tip and I absolutely did that like I would put figurines in the lunch boxes just to mm -hmm. like save space so I was like I have a little bit of practice at this but <laughs> I don't know if I ever shared the video of me fitting like 
2,000 scoobs into a Honda Element, but oh I will, God, I will wow. find a damn, I'll send you that video, I'll find a way, it's not leaving me again, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa. And the last question that we have written down is, what do you think that it is about Scooby-Doo that has made it last for 52 years? I really do think it's because it is wholesome and generic. I feel like every character, be it the gang or even the side characters and even the villains, I feel like they were given enough of a personality to make them interesting to watch but it was, it was like the bare minimum, but it was enough because I think that one thing that every good kids show has is a level of imagination, leaving it to the viewer. When I was little and I was watching all of these Scooby series, uh, the reason that I am such a fan of the scrappy episodes and even those little short ones, which I get why people don't love them as much, but to me, they were so creative that it's not even like I was watching them thinking about the story as much as I was just like taking in everything that was visual. You know, there was a man that was also a cat. And I was like, this is so weird. And like, he's creepy, but he's so like the way they drew him was so interesting and the settings and everything. And it was so colorful. And I just, like we talked about earlier, everyone can relate to somebody in the gang on some level because they're not so specific. You know, we, they, they have a personality. All right. Enough that we can recognize traits in them that we also have in ourselves or characteristics that they have that we would like to possess and, and strive to be more like them. Um, but there was nothing in it specific enough that would alienate anybody. Anyone can, can sit down and watch classic Scooby-Doo and enjoy it. Um, I feel like when you leave that avenue of imagination open, how do you go wrong? How does anything not withstand the test of time when it's like that? And I also feel like I never watch classic Scooby-Doo and think to myself, wow, is this ever dated? Are there certain aspects of some of the clothing where you're like, oh yeah, this is the seventies. Yes. But honestly, I find like not as much as you would think. Mm -hmm. I find like even the wardrobes in the series are not like super duper decade specific. You know, I could totally see people wearing a lot of similar things now to what they wore in 69 and 70 and all the way through the eighties and stuff. It really the only like actually like, dated thing for me would be the different hairstyle that we see for Daphne in the 80s other than that everything it's kind of just timeless I'm not saying everybody it would be everybody's taste but it's not like super dated in anything everything was just so streamlined and just enough information for you to enjoy it just enough left to your imagination that people of any age at any point in time, be it 50 years ago or today, can still watch it and enjoy it. And you don't feel like you're watching something that's old. It always feels relevant. And like I say, how do you go wrong with that? Because it can appeal to everybody. And so I think that is what makes Scooby so unique. And like the wholesome aspect of it, like there's nothing... I mean, obviously there's bad guys and what they're doing is negative, but we don't see negativity in the gang. You know, they're not fighting with each other and it really is just like 22 minutes of pure escapism where there's like nothing bad in it for you. You're not going to walk away feeling like, wow, I don't feel good. Like there's a lot of stuff that's on TV today, be it for kids or for adults, whatever it is, just generally in entertainment. And you don't really feel that great having watched it. Like maybe it was entertaining. I'm not saying that it wasn't entertaining, but like it's sad or something like hurts when you watch it. You know what I mean? People are dying or whatever. Scooby just doesn't have that. Good versus evil, good wins. 
and nobody really gets hurt. Like even the villains don't really get hurt in Scooby-Doo. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of dangerous situations that the gang is in. We don't have to see them bloody. We don't have to see them in the hospital. Like they're always okay. And you know, that's the thing. It was so consistent that if you sat down to watch Scooby, like, you know, that no matter what the mystery is today, it's going to have an okay outcome. And if you're feeling down and you just need something to like pick you up, you can watch any episode you want and you're going to get that from it. And I think that makes Scooby very unique and very special and why in another 50 years, I really do think that he'll still be going strong. I think Scooby has lasted 52 years because it's a show that anybody can watch, kids, adults, teens. I have watched some pretty awful shows with my kids and it's always good when there are shows that I can enjoy just as much as they do because otherwise sitting through it is just torture. So, and there's not a whole lot of shows that my kids have watched that I have liked watching. I mean, I, I liked Phineas and Ferb, Scooby-Doo, um, even Thomas the Train wasn't too bad, uh, Blue's Clues, but a lot of the other shows that they would watch, I just didn't like. Um, but I, I would prefer when my kids were younger, I preferred to watch stuff with them so that I knew what they were being subjected to, or I would watch it before they did. Um, but yeah, I, I really think it's just because it's, it's for anybody, anyone can sit and watch Scooby-Doo and enjoy the show. And, you know, for me, it's always been my safe place. So I, I'm sure that other people have seen Scooby-Doo the same way. And yeah, I, I also feel like everyone is trying to create a version of Scooby-Doo that's like their version of Scooby-Doo. So I think because people want to keep doing that, it's going to keep going. Tori? I think like part of what has made Scooby-Doo last so long is it's so approachable because of one, the format of how the episodes are, especially with the original you know, there's something spooky happens, something stolen, whatever. The gang gets involved. There are clues. There's a trap. They solve the mystery unmasked. There you go. Um, it wasn't like a serial thing. So you could come in at any episode, really. You know, you didn't have to come in season one, episode one, where a lot of shows now, it's not standalone episodes. It's a whole serial thing. So if you come in the middle, you have no idea who the characters are. You know, there's all these things going on. But having it be just like a single episode, a single story, and having those different elements change within the show, I think opens up for a lot of different room for interpretation. Um, and I think that's how you can have so many different formats is because they're following essentially the same formula, but you're just changing little things here and there to make it seem fresh and new and different. Um, and they even did explore where things are more, I guess, linear, like in Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, but is it as approachable as Scooby-Doo, where are you? No, because you're going to come in and you're going to say, who's hot dog water? Who's Professor Pericles? I don't know what any of this crap is, but you could hop in at any time on Scooby-Doo, where are you? And be able to enjoy the episode. And I think with the original two, they didn't dumb it down, I guess. Like the show is for children, but the language isn't, you know, like for little kids, like a cocoa melon, whatever. Like anyone can watch it. Anyone can enjoy it. I think they really... Um, respected the audience in a way of not making it too kiddie, I guess. Cause it, I mean, it's a kid's show, like it's a kid's show, but we all enjoy it because I feel like they just don't pander to the audience like some other kids series do nowadays. So I guess that's why I think it's lasted so long. And I do think it will continue to just go on and on and on. Alexa. I think that um the art in particular was just done so well that it's nice just to watch like even if you are just coming in for the first time it's like oh this is really beautiful like let me sit down and watch an episode um and also just the variety in the villains um and the relatability of each of the gang um and I think within the formula, the ability to watch and almost feel like you're a part of it, like trying to find the clues 
figure out who did it like before the gang does or at the same time like when they're doing the unmasking being like okay I think it's this character um which is a little bit easier in the later iterations because are you it's like sometimes they only meet one other person but <laughs> um yeah and definitely just the ability to pass it down through generations is awesome seven uh well you guys definitely already took uh everything i was gonna say <laughs> Um, so, I mean, yeah, I know the, uh, the big reason why I personally enjoy it is definitely because of the art style. It's beautiful. Uh, the spooky setting, you know, I love all the monsters and the villains and all that. That's very, like, there's something about it. It's just, it draws me in, you know? Um, and I think as a kid, even as an adult, you kind of just like to be spooked a little bit. You know what I mean? You just, something about it, you're like, oh, I want to be scared. And so I think that's a big part of it, but also generic plot and characters you know it's the same kind of plot over and over you know like you it's already been mentioned like they go somewhere they have to solve a mystery there's spooky stuff going on all that and the characters are just generic enough that you know it's easy to put them with anything and i think a big part about how they can just keep going with it and going with it and going with it is because the setting can be different in every single episode it's not like oh they have an apartment and the, it takes place like a sitcom like it takes place in this apartment or this is their house or they work here it's like the, their office building is a van and it can literally take them anywhere in the whole world so they can just do anything so that's just like endless episodes and the protagonist it's not like they have or the antagonist it's not like they have like oh this is their villain like i know for example batman has more than one villain but like saying like oh batman's the gang and they're the villain is is the joker they can just make anyone new every episode. They don't have to have like a reoccurring villain or anything like that. So they can go anywhere, meet anybody. And they add all the the celebrities and like stuff like that. And so it's just, they can they can pretty much do anything with Scooby-Doo. I think that's just what it is. is they, they've made it so that they, from like from the start and early enough on that they can just add anybody or anything to it because they've had so many different iterations that it's okay to just like, oh, we're going to start a new series. And it's gonna be completely different, but like you, you get the point. You know what I mean? Like that's it. It's like, it just works. They can do anything they want with it. And it just works. Yeah, Leah. <laughs> I think for me, what stands out to me about Scooby Doo lasting so long is that there really is something for everybody. Like at the beginning, we all talked about our favorite iteration of Scooby Doo, and we listed off a whole bunch of different ones. Maybe some people like the music. Maybe some people like, you know, like y'all were saying, the art. Maybe some people like the older stuff, like me. But then there's other people who really get into like the plot line of Mystery Incorporated or the humor of Be Cool or the nostalgia. It's like, it doesn't really matter what you're looking for. There's something in the Scooby-Doo canon somewhere for you. I think that's part of the reason like so many of us don't particularly care for Scoob. Like I liked it, it wasn't one of my favorites, but I think the reason I liked it was because I work with kids and so I see, okay, this is the good avenue for kids to see Scooby-Doo. Of course, it's not super entertaining for me because I'm used to my Scooby-Doo in a set way, but I think at the end of the day, that's what's so beautiful about Scooby-Doo is that there's so many different, you know, there's the episodes where the villains always fake there's the episodes later on like in the 80s and stuff where it's like real monsters and it's more spooky like 13 ghosts not necessarily my cup of tea but it's good because there's other people out there who that's their favorite and, and I think that's just great and I think like y'all all have said with so many different versions coming out and people doing different things with Scooby-Doo I think it's going to continue I mean just the fact that we've got you know, the Velma show coming out and then we've got the, the children's show coming out. They're two completely different shows, but both of them, it's like, even if I don't like them, it's like, well, it's continuing the Scooby universe. And so at the end of the day, that makes me happy that hopefully there's somebody out there who will like it. Danny? Um, yeah, it's, it's whimsical and it's real and that makes it adaptable to anything and any taste. And that will, that's what has kept it going. That's what, what will keep it going. And even you can have two people look at the exact same thing and they both saw it completely differently because it's well-established, but also very open. So it's just, no matter what, you're going to find one angle that wins, that keeps it in somebody's mind. Yeah. Does anybody else have anything else to say about anything that we have asked? topics or warm up or anything. 
We have Long made it. it. <laughs> Long live the scoops. <laughs> I think someone needs to do like a very in-depth, maybe anthropological study of like Scooby-Doo and society, because there's got to be some sort of key component of human nature that makes Scooby-Doo so appealing. Because when you think about it, it's just a cartoon from the 60s, 70s. Like right. how has this one cartoon outlasted all of the others of that time period per se? And like, you know, no one's watching Captain Caveman or Jabberjaw, but they're watching Scooby-Doo. There's just, there's something about it. There's that magical component of Scooby-Doo. And I'm sure if someone like really studied it, there could be some like great insight of like human nature. In Scooby. I want to see it done like academic, scholarly. Okay. <laughs> yes, I'm going back to school. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it is really interesting though, because like even through all the years, some of the cartoons that are around or came around, like when Scooby-Doo was around or before it, or even just like slightly after, like you still see them pop up today, like, oh, like Archie, like comics, like, oh, there's Riverdale now and stuff, you know, but like, it just doesn't like last through the years, like Scooby has, like Scooby's always just constantly been a big, like forefront thing, like the Flintstones, there was the Flintstones, and they had like a couple like cartoon movies and things, and then they had like the live action movies and stuff, but it's like, it hasn't like stuck like Scooby-Doo has, and it's really yeah. interesting. Like why? Why? Why is that? Why can't other cartoons? Have there ever been make... so many different iterations of one cartoon besides Scooby Doo? You know what I mean? Like yeah. the character. Yeah. Well, I feel like with the Flintstones, it's you know set in a certain time period, so they feel like they have to do things in that time period, and you can only do so much with that. Yeah. And then same thing with the Jetsons. It's set in the future. Well. I mean, really, you can only do so much with them being set in the future. Maybe if you had them do like time travel, that, but then it's technically not really the Jetsons if they're not in the future. Yeah. But with Scooby, like Scooby could be anywhere and they can make it work. Time traveling Scooby Doo. Yeah. I was just thinking that. I can make that happen. <laughs> yeah. That would be interesting. Each episode, they travel to a different time. Yeah. Just rebuild the, the machine from the creepy cruise, but like actually working. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> or a Scooby Doo document properly. That'd be interesting. <laughs> I want to see them go back to what a night for a night. I want to see them interact with themselves, breaking yeah. into the museum, and they're like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I want to see like the what's new Scooby Doo versions, like talking to the where are you versions and like seeing the differences. Like, yeah. <laughs> they could easily do that. <laughs> it's like a big international Scooby presence too like it's just so well known across the world I feel like the only comparable cartoons I would think of would be like a Mickey Mouse Disney situation or maybe like Looney Tunes because I was trying to think like what other cartoon is so globally recognized like merch all over the world like what I mean besides like Disney stuff I can't really think of anything that big, you know, separate from like a comic superhero variety. Like I would say it's on par with those, you know, pretty established animated characters. Well, Mickey Mouse too is an interesting one because I've thought about that before too. And it's like, I feel like now Mickey Mouse is only popular as like a character, not like, yeah. oh, let me go see that Mickey Mouse movie or show or whatever yeah. it's not like that you know what I mean like Mickey Mouse is basically just like the Ronald McDonald of Disney like he's just yeah. kind of like yeah it's it's not really the same like you know who he is everyone knows who Mickey Mouse is obviously but he's not like he's just a mascot yeah, yeah he's just a mascot yeah 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 and you figure with sorry go ahead Tori I was just saying, we need a spooky island like everyone has Disneyland and Disney World. I swear, oh spooky God. island could be just as big. Yeah, there's yes. trees. Yes. We so could make fun. it work. Yeah. Yeah, with, with both Disney and Looney Tunes, I feel like the, the real difference is that both of those are based on so many different characters within the property. 
Whereas with Scooby, it is literally the five main characters just over and over and over and over again. With Looney Tunes, you've got both Bugs and Sylvester and Tweety and Daffy and Elmer Fudd and Yosemite Sam. Like there's a whole bunch of characters that are not always together though. Mm -hmm. And the same with Disney, you've got Mickey and Minnie and Donald, yes, but then you've got the princess films and all of the other things that make up what Disney actually is. I feel like, in my opinion, it's Disney that's popular, not necessarily Mickey Mouse. Whereas yeah. with Scooby, it's Scooby and the Scooby gang, like they are the franchise. It's not, the, it, it's the characters, it's not the show. Whereas with the other two that are the big giants, it's the show and not the characters because there's so many different characters and none of the characters on their own have like the longevity that the Scooby characters do so it, it is interesting to to look back and see all of like the the spin-offs that even Hanna-Barbera tried to make of Scooby and it's not that they're necessarily bad but you know what's the, there's some saying about like trapping lightning in a bottle and stuff like I mean it happened once and I think even if we were to understand what like Tori was saying there's got to be some key component and yet even if you knew it I don't think you could replicate it because I think that the component has to work with all of the other things that went with it so people are always looking for like oh this thing over here was popular like what made it popular so that we can recreate that and like I think they could try for a lifetime and they'll never they'll never be able to capture the magic that is Scooby it, it, it was a once in a lifetime everybody's lifetime though thing you know i'm not saying yeah. that there aren't things that exist in the world more popular than scooby or as popular but as far as like a kid's cartoon oh i don't know if they'll ever be able to top that yeah. i don't think that they no. will I that's a that really that's a really interesting kids. interesting point like that you know obviously yeah they they Hanna barbera and stuff they tried to like replicate we do over and over and over again because they knew it was like something that was super special and good and they just couldn't do it and that just goes to show too it's not like and scooby-doo is still popular even though they try to replicate it it's not like disney's like let's make 10 different exact versions of like mickey mouse because it's not really like a mickey mouse formula he's just a character there's a yeah. scooby-doo formula mickey mouse doesn't have a have that you know what i mean and it's the same with like bugs bunny and like daffy and stuff not necessarily there's like shticks that they do over and over but there's not like a formula to like the looney tunes right. really and it's and they're not like trying to replicate the looney tunes over and over either it's really weird mm -hmm. something there's something about scooby-doo and everybody's like what is it and no one yeah. knows <laughs> and i think it's also about like making it accessible and you know wanting to be watched by kids and adults and teenagers and like anyone Whereas like things like, I don't know, like Sesame Street, for example, is like popular when you're younger, but that's not something that like as an adult, if you don't have kids, you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to go watch an episode of Sesame Street. But like Scooby, like anyone can just be like, oh, I'm going to go watch an episode of Scooby-Doo, where are you? And you get the nostalgia from it. And it's still like, just, you know, fun to watch. Yeah. I think that Scooby-Doo is just here to stay and oh darn, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, just guess I'll keep buying stuff if they keep making it. That's right. <laughs> Investments. We're spending our money wisely. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we're all just stuck here. <laughs> so those are all the questions that we have for for this round of Scooby-Doo Table Topics Edition. That's what we're calling it. Um, yeah, so it was fun. I, I think it was cool mm -hmm. to hear everybody's answers. And I think eventually we'll have to do a, a round two. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to another Scooby panel. I'm Nikki Blake from ScoobyAddicts.com. If you like these panels, please subscribe to my channel for more great discussions. A huge shout out to our patrons, Ross from ScoobyFan.net, Carson Maitland-Smith, Scooby-Doo of Roblox, and Ruth Elliott Hillsden. If you would like to support the Scooby panel, please go to patreon.com slash scoobyaddicts.
A very special thank you to Alexa Lawler, host of the Unmasked History of Scooby-Doo podcast, artist, blogger, and Scooby collector Wendy Bridge, Guinness record holder and Scooby fan Danny Meager, miniature artist Devin Smith from Awesome Thanks, Scooby-Doo collector Leah Jenkins, and Scooby-Doo fan Tori. Scooby and Shaggy were voiced by Scott Innes. Check out Scott's website, onescottshop.com. Scooby Panel is available in podcast form on most podcast platforms or as a web series on YouTube. Scooby Addicts artwork by Will Davenport. Video editing by Nikki Blake. Music composed and performed by Bovine Nightmares. Please join us next time for another Scooby Panel.